Hey Capricorns, how y'all doing? Welcome. We're going to be doing your October general reading here. So let's get right into your meditation. But of course, and as always, really interesting. So if anyone is familiar with the novel that was also made into a mini miniseries uh, for BBC, <laughs> um, there is a, a book in a series called Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell by Susanna Clark. And in that novel, it's very much about the fae, the fae folk, fairies, and it's a lot about um, what goes on at nighttime within fae lore, because that's how what's coming through in your meditation, Capricorn. Let's just talk about fairy lore for a moment. Uh, there's this aspect of creativity or um, associated madness that happens at night, which I feel like, you know, is really talking of, is speaking of the creative mind or the subconscious, right? So within fae lore... There's a lot of, you know, tales of humans waking up in the morning and their feet are really muddy and, and, and really sore because they've been dancing all night in the woods with the fairies, right? Stuff like that. Um, <laughs> in this particular context, there is a, a series of scenes set in the fae world where they have these, you know, nighttime dance ball parties, right? Where they're dancing and they're waltzing and they dance and dance and dance and dance and dance and the humans literally cannot stop. They they are compulsively dancing under this magical nighttime influence. Um, and they go and go and go until they literally, like until it's morning and they literally drop, right? So I saw this scene going on, right? And then I saw it pan to the author, uh, Susanna Clark, who was writing all of this down and dreaming this up. So it showed me kind of like the author perspective of what went on or what goes on inside of the artist's mind, right? Or the creator's mind, really, because we are all creators, right? Um, and how one might bring that into life, right? It, it, it's about tapping into aspects of yourself, of your own subconscious, of your own madness, right? In order to create something that is really fantastical. I'm hearing like J.K. Rowling with Harry Potter, right? How did she get there? By the way, I've seen um, 111 and 222 on the timer so far. So repeating numbers coming through for y'all. Um, high time of synchronicity, right? Crow energy. So... With this, I want to say to you that you are only limited by your imagination. That's what your October feels like. Is you are only limited by the confines, right, or parameters of your imagination. And I feel like that relates to a lot of different things. That, But I, I feel like it, it does have to relate to your potential, what you're capable of, what you are of a mind or out of a mind to manifest on a larger or more creative or um, very different, I could say, if it's not creative, very different scale, right? If you're working, if you're going after something, if you are looking to manifest something, whether it's moving homes, changing jobs, actually creating something or writing something like Susanna Clark, whatever that is, you are only limited by your own imagination, right? It's kind of like an Alice in Wonderland kind of descent into that really good vortex madness, right? Where you come back out of it and you're like, oh my God, I have the best idea. Oh my God, I now know what to do about this. Oh my God, right? This makes all the sense in the world. Yes, Capricorn, <laughs> I'm here for it. Waking me up in the morning. I love this. So this is absolute perfection. Okay, so horse energy here, right? So first of all, I want to point out this moon on this lovely horse head here um we were just talking about the nighttime right and so then it's coming through for you so there is something about the nighttime your subconscious tapping into that aspect within you that is creative or inventive or knows all the answers right that's an old trope for a reason we we really do have the answers within us there are aspects of ourselves that have a very clear sight, <laughs> right? It's just quieting down the human noise in order to access it. And I say that like it's as easy as making a cup of tea. It ain't, it is not always that easy, but the more that you do it, the more that you set an intention to do it, it's just like going to the gym. You're, you're able to do more and more and more every time, right? With practice and, and strengthening those you know muscles, right? So horse energy here, this is about, this is wonderful because 
Horses are astral travelers, right? Energetically speaking, they're able to travel from one dimension to another. Um, also with horse medicine, this speaks of allowing yourself a certain personal freedom. Horses are all about freedom. They are loyal. They will be there for you. They are incredibly intelligent and kind and wonderful, wonderful, wonderful people, right? Because I do, I do believe that animals are people too. And the shadow side of the horse is that they, if they are, if they are mistreated, disrespected, if they are kept in confines for too long or that is, that is, you know, too small for them, they will buck, they will rebel, they will let you know, they will nip and bite and kick and run, right? There's that aspect of the untamed self or the tamed self that's coming in here. And if you think about it, you know, fairies are known, you know, and especially in lore, right? They are known for being a bit crazy and having that influence on humans. I'm hearing to really, I just saw 555, five, five. Uh, really allowing your mind to really break open and expand because there's there's an aspect of it that, that has a lot more potential. I'm seeing this movie, I cannot remember the name of it, but it's this movie where you, someone like takes the pill and opens up like the rest of their mind potential. It's like we only use a small percentage of our brains. You're being asked to expand that in some way, not by taking anything necessarily, although, you know, you do you, but, you know, <laughs> but uh, th this is really about setting an intention to kind of think differently or allow yourself to, to spend some time outside of your normal or routine um, mindset, routine, whatever that is for you. Also, this equates to chariot energy in the tarot, which is cancer energy, fast forward, balanced movement ahead, which is very auspicious. This is the train has left the station energy, right? And I like that you've got an earth energy being an earth sign yourself that is always auspicious. I'm hearing a balance with the mind, body, spirit is too. That always comes up with the horse. <laughs> Obsessed. Um, that always comes up with the horse because it's, it's very much about when you are in complete alignment with the mind, body, spirit, you know, all of that right? That's from there you can work most optimally. If you think about a horse, right? They're built for optimal performance, right? And just naturally built that way. So there's something about that as well. Um, yes. Okay. So <laughs> this is really, really nice. So here we have the dream angel, which is really beautiful. So first of all, this is temperance in the traditional tarot, right? Or no, it's not. This is the star. Of course it's the star. You know what's interesting here is that we have the moon here, the moon. It's mirroring this moon, right? But I just, I can't really put them together. But do you see how this is facing that way and this is facing this way? And then we're talking about how you're only limited by the confines of your imagination. There's something about like daytime and then like nighttime as well. There's something about a mirror image or the flip side of something, doing something differently or out of tune with how you normally would. I'm seeing someone write something in reverse or write something with invisible ink or go about something in a very different way that that accesses um, a certain opening up of ideas or perspective. It's, it's interesting, it's very, very interesting. So we have the dream angel here. So this is a really beautiful energy with Aquarian energy here. And now this, this feels very spot on for you guys as well because Aquarian energy is all about invention, creation, Aquarian, the Aquarian archetype is someone who thinks differently than everybody else and is way ahead of their time, right? <laughs> it's, it's that kind of energy, like Nikola Tesla kind of energy, right? I'm not sure if Tesla was an Aquarius, but um, it's that kind of energy, right? Abraham Lincoln was uh, an Aquarius. It's that kind of like, I, I'm thinking differently, than the majority of other people. So I may not be completely understood, but I, I, I know that I'm onto something. I just know it, I feel it in my bones. So I'm gonna create this, or I'm gonna go about it this way, even, and, and not expect anyone to completely understand what I'm doing at first, but they'll get with it eventually. <laughs> There's this really strong aspect of being ahead of your time here. 
okay? Or being a couple steps ahead. Now, in interpersonal relationships, this could even come through where you, just for a random example, you want to move homes. You want to move completely other side of the world. And you have a partner who's going, huh? But you're going, listen, I'm having dreams about it. I'm seeing signs about it. I feel it in my bones. I just, something in me is telling me to do this. And that there's some, that they're, the best life is there for us, right? So it's just kind of like holding their hand and going, I know you may not get it, but I, I, I as long as you feel okay about it, like go with me on this. Let's at least go visit and see the place or something, right? It's about getting others to just kind of like, or, or allowing others to go at their own pace with whatever this energy is for you. But at the same time, bounding forward because you just are going to feel it in your bones. If there is something you need to create or do or pursue, Okay. But it does feel a little two steps ahead or um, ahead of your time. Okay. You know, the star energy here too is, is really beautiful because it speaks of divine hope, faith, but also being in the public eye. So there's an aspect of like fame or recognition or spotlight on you as well. That can be on a smaller scale too, which is brilliant, where you just have like a, a, you know, a dedicated close group of fellow creators or friends or coworkers that just really um, are on board with what you're doing, even though they may not completely understand it. Okay. You also have the turtle here too, which is four of wands energy, which really, really speaks of there's no need to um, necessarily rush ahead or control things um, from a 3D perspective, but rather going like, I just know I'm on my highest and best path. And so I'm going to enjoy getting there as well. Right. It's a really beautiful energy for you. Really, really beautiful. Dream angel. Mm. Okay. seven of pentacles this is literally what we were just talking about so seven of pentacles interesting because we were just talking about the turtle with not needing to rush ahead or, or taking your time enjoying to where you're going right so it's really interesting more moons here what's really i'm really like taken by this so look at this so there's two moons here right there's two moons right and then there's two moons here and then one in the middle what is going on here <laughs> it's really interesting. Um, phases, timing, perspective, right? So with the Seven of Pentacles, we got this lovely crow here on his shoulder. What's what's fascinating is doesn't he kind of have this energy of like, you know, kind of on my own, but I'm all right. And I have this, you know, uh, kind of like source of inspiration or magic that's working through and with me. What did I say about synchronicity and, and then crows as well coming through, right? Well, I'm also really drawn to this rainbow as well, which is also an aspect of like dipping into another, just in terms of like mythology, right? With the Celtic lore and the whole leprechaun thing. And, you know, there's a lot of mysticism around rainbows as well. There really is something otherworldly um, that's coming through in your reading for sure. And it feels really, really nice. Really, really nice. Traditionally speaking, Seven of Pentacles really is about trusting that the seeds that you've sown will bear fruit. Okay. It's enacting that patience and trust. That you've done, you know, you've taken the steps that you've needed to take and that you're really on your highest and best path. And it's really, really nice. And this makes just so much sense. So here you have the dream protector. So yes, this is the emperor, right? Which is really, really, really interesting because <laughs> the emperor, traditionally speaking, that's Aries energy, right? So that's really that, that patriarchal kind of father energy as well, where it's, it's our masculine, right? Energy where, uh, you know, the, it can be kind of a heavier weight on the shoulders. This is kind of that, you know, I, I, a lot of people depend on me or I need to do this a certain way or in a certain time, you know, um, having um, a concern or a mindset that is heavily around finances, right? Attention to details, dotting your I's, crossing your T's, all of that. But what I'm really getting here with the dream protector, we're talking about dreams, we're talking about nighttime. Weren't we talking about like in the in the book in Fay lore, right? It was when humans were sleeping. And we talked about, you know, dream times of conscious, all of that, the dream protector. I do feel like this is twofold. I feel like on one hand, this is talking about the people around you that are there to hold down the fort, 
while you're you're working with the energy that's available to you right now, right? I feel like there's some wonderful ideas that are going to come through with this current energy for you. And I'm hearing the more you can kind of ride that wave and expand your mind open to the po uh, potentials that come through around that, uh, the, the farther you go, the more potential that there is, right? Potential breeds more potential. That's what it feels like. So on the other hand, though, I feel like there's an aspect um, of you that's calling you to protect your own dream, protect your own vision, to hold steadfast with it, even if others can't see it right away or in the same way that you do, right? I just heard it's my turn. It's my turn, right? So this may be reverse for you where you've been holding someone else down and really supporting their dreams or supporting their needs. And you're like, okay, my turn. Dream Angel. Oh, well, don't you know? So here we have the Ace of Swords here to clarify this Dream Angel lady. You know, the Ace of Swords, that is that this is, by the way, the, the card of the writer. So that's interesting, right? Um, Ace of Swords is that big clarity. It's communication. It's an offer. It's a big idea. There's something brewing here that, that, that feels almost genius or rather clever right? And again, this could be inspiration to move somewhere. This could be inspiration that, that, to really pursue this other line of work or take a risk on something or, you know, uh, go forward with this thing that you're writing, whatever this is for you. But this is the card of the writer and the creator and the big idea. Now, interesting with the Hawk energy here as well. Hawk is about vision and how you see things. There is a running theme in this reading about perception, how you see things, how things look in the moonlight versus how they, this is what I was saying. On the back of this deck, right? With these moons lining up in the circle in the middle, right? Maiden Mother Crone, life cycles, phases, different aspects of yourself. Seven of Pentacles. Oh, two for one, two for one. Okay. I feel like this is here. Okay. Wow. So we have you popping up in your reading here, but of course, right, with the devil energy, this is the shadow side. So it's it's really interesting here. Uh, this is clarifying the seven of pentacles. Let's talk about patience and let's talk about fear that if things aren't done a certain way or in a certain time, they're not going to work or there's going to be a missed opportunity or something. There's, there's this like this fear of missing out or missing the boat or the muse running out or running away, right? There's something about a fear with that. There's something here that I'm picking up with, like, because traditionally speaking, the devil is about everything of the 3D. It's what we can see, touch, feel. This is Capricorn energy. This is y'all, right? The fact that you guys are coming up in your own reading to clarify the seven of pentacles, which is more earth energy, which is about patience and trust and the natural timing of things. Sometimes we can have an attachment to a certain way of doing things or a certain outcome or whatever that is. And you're being asked to, to engage in some active trust that the way that, you're, uh, the way that you are inspired to go about something or the way that you're seeing something or an idea that you have, it, it, <laughs> it may be different. It may be uncomfortable. It may be risky. It may feel really weird and wacky. But come from a place, try to look at it from like a Aquarius would, where you're having faith in, in, in what you're feeling as opposed to any 3D returns. I think the worst thing you can do around this energy is kind of go, mm, but logically it doesn't make sense. But logistically, how would we make that work? Like that that's the kind of thing that feels like anti this energy. Remember, this is just the energy that's going on for this month for you guys. You can work or not work with it in any way that you want. This is just a map to the potential for you to work with the energy that is on hand for you to manifest right? What it is that's in your highest and best good on a larger scale, right? But this is about fear, ego, attachment, addiction. You might even be addicted to, um, or really in the belief that you have to work really, really hard in, in order to get any kind of, um, good results. That's a script. It's not actually true. Where did you learn that from? Which is not to say that hard work doesn't pay off. It does. But what's your idea of hard work? What, what is that script for you? Is there a different way of going about something that, that maybe gets you to the same place, right? But with less effort or with feeling better about it or, you know, whatever have you, okay? There's a pattern or a certain belief system that's kind of holding you back and, and stunting your growth in some way, shape, or form, okay? It could, and I feel like it might really have to do with money or the, the physical physical world. 
So we have the lovers here to clarify the emperor, which is brilliant. So the lovers is Gemini energy, but of course, but remember when I said that there was someone um, who was supporting you and holding it down, or you've been supporting someone else and now you're like, it's my turn. This is very much about choices and love, but I feel like for you guys, this is also making the choice from a place of self-love and love for others, right? That you are able to serve others best when you are serving yourself. That's a shadow side of the emperor that says, I have to do everything on my own, <laughs> right? I have to carry this load alone because that's my lot and that's the story I tell myself and yada, 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 yada. It's Aquarius energy that's coming in here to say like, mm, are you sure about that? Can we get a rewrite? <laughs> Can we get a rewrite? Right? I'm actually hearing rewrite the stars from Greatest Showman, interestingly enough. Um, yes, yeah, so the lovers also speaks of an inner and outer harmony as well right? It feels like something wants to come and do a greater alignment for you. Maybe using different tools to get there or the components are slightly different. There's something about that, okay? But I'm also hearing to relinquish control, right? There's something that it feels like you're doing something in a way or doing a little too much or putting a lot on yourself or you're ascribing to a certain role within a given relationship, whether that's work or personal or whatever have you, even your relationship with yourself, that feels like maybe you could take another look at that. It's an oracle. Oh, oh, wow. Let's talk about this. We were just talking about this with the devil energy. Yeah. So you have the hungry ghosts, which is really interesting with the failure because there's, there's, literally fairies on that, which is interesting. And this is not a, like a fairy deck or anything. Um, really interesting. So the hungry ghost says obsessions, scarcity, consciousness, attachment. What were we just talking about? A fear that, that, you know, either you're not always going to have what you need, or if you don't work really hard, this isn't going to happen. Or if you share the load that, that a ball is going to get dropped or whatever that is. And then you have this poet, obsessions, scarcity, consciousness, attachment, really look at those scripts because this also talks about, this is 3D stuff we're talking about and fear, but also it feels like an old script that could use a rewrite. Okay, that, that's really what it feels like, <laughs> right? The hungry ghost. So let's talk about hungry ghosts, um, you know, as an energy as well. First of all, one plus four equals five, which is the number of change. There is a lot of change of foot, but it's interesting because I feel like with the horse, which is all about freedom, right? You're being asked to free yourself, right? From the confines of your own self-perceived limitations, and you are only limited by the, you know, the expanse of your own imagination, right? It feels like we just want to burst you out of some sort of like sort of self-imposed prison that, that maybe you even learned you grew up with, right? But there's something about that, right? I, I've seen the image of like someone's parent, you know, kind of, um, you know, d d passing down a script that they got from their parents and their parents. It says like, life is, go life is hard and life is going to be hard. The best that you can do is work as hard as you can and only by doing that, you know, it doesn't matter if you lose sleep. It doesn't matter if you don't, you know, have a good time. Life is hard. And so you have to work hard in order to survive. So then you're passed down this survivor script, right? And you're operating from that, always in that survival mode, because that's what you know, that's what you've learned. And because it's what you were taught to believe, you you tend to manifest that as your reality. You only manifest things when you, when you work really, really hard with the mindset of like, this is going to be hard. So as a result, your path, your experiences are all really hard. Because that's what you believe and you are a creator. So you manifest what you believe in, Right. It's ABCs and one, two, threes, right? Of energy, but this is about freedom. So can you kind of rewrite that script? Can you kind of identify what that script is and said, what if I, what if I was taught or what if I want to teach future children, whatever it is, right? What if I was taught that, you know, life is full of endless potential and that if I really want something and I go after it, with equal parts, effort, and belief in faith, 
then it will manifest for me and that if it's my door, it will just open. I'm not gonna have to pound on it. I'm not gonna have to shove it. I'm not gonna have to kick it down and sweat and toil and bleed for that door to open. If it's my door, it will open. What if I was taught that? Something to think about here, okay? This is coming up for you, right? I just, I swear, I just saw 24, 24 in the timer. It's like repeating numbers, a lot of crow energy, horse energy. With this crow energy, that means that you're gonna have a lot of signs and symbols and synchronicities coming through for you to help you on this quest of personal freedom, okay, Capricorn? It's there, but in order to catch those signs and symbols, you do have to, you know, be aware, be in the given moment, right? Look how he's looking away from the rainbow. And it's literally, it's like this guy here is like, I need the sign of a rainbow to let me know that this path that I'm on is 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 really on my highest and best good. And then he's sitting out here and the crow's like, hey, hey, look to your left, look to your left. But he's like, oh, the water, look to your left, look to your left, oh, right? So, so eyes akimbo, people. <laughs> All right, Capricorns, this is your October general reading. I so, so hope that this helped and resonated. And um, would you do me a huge favor and holler at me in the comments? Let me know what's going on. This is my second reading back um, from my high A test, and it's it's so, so good to be back. My favorite part of this whole gig, though, is, is reading your comments and hearing what you guys are up to. Um, happy Samhain to my brothers and sisters. Happy Halloween to you all. What are y'all doing this month? How is this reading landing? How do you feel about fairies and hungry ghosts and horses and crows? <laughs> Talk to me. What you working on? What you working on? What are, what are your inherited scripts and limiting beliefs? Huh? What's going on? Uh, with that being said, you guys, this was this was such a trip. <laughs> Thank you guys for being here. Thank you so, so much for your continued support. And as always, and most of all, thank you for being you and be well until next time.